when we talk about complex zeros of a function, complex zeros always come in pairs. So if a plus bi is a zero or a solution, then its conjugate a minus bi is also a zero. And that is always going to be true. And it will always be the conjugate. The reason why it's the conjugate is when you multiply a complex by its conjugate, it comes out to be a real number. And that's why there's no i's in the, the function. If you'd had just a plus bi without the a minus bi, there would be an i when you have when you're reading the function. So the conjugate turns it into all real numbers. So here we've got f of x equals 4x cubed minus 25x minus 33. Find all the zeros. So again, start with the rational roots test to find all your possibilities. The factors of p over q. So we're going to have 33 over 4. So the factors of 33 are 1 and 33 and 3 and 11. And the factors of 4 are 1 and 4 and 2 and 2. So all our possibilities will be plus or minus 1, 3, 11, 33. Move over to the 2. So I've got 1 half, 3 halves. 11 halves and 33 halves and then using the 4 I'm going to have 1 fourth, 3 fourths, 11 fourths and 33 fourths. So those are all my possibilities. Now I know that's a lot but usually one of the whole numbers will work. So you're just going to start guessing and checking. Now be careful if you notice here the x squared factor is missing, so you're going to put a zero placeholder in for the x squared. So you're going to have a 4, a 0, a negative 25, and a negative 33. And let's start with negative 1. Bring down the 4, negative 4, negative 4, 4. Um, that will give me negative 21, and that will give me 21. So that is obviously not going to work. So let's try um, let's try a positive one. Again, that's not going to work because I don't get a remainder of zero. So let's move on to um, negative three. Oh, that gives me 11. Oh, not going to work either because that'll give me a negative 66. But I bet the positive 3 will work, so let's try it. And this actually works. We get a remainder of 0. So 3 is one of my zeros. And now, since I started with a cubed root. This is a quadratic 4x squared plus 12x plus 11. And you might try a couple times, but you'll soon, soon realize that this won't factor. So if that doesn't factor, you're going to have to go to the quadratic formula. So my a is 4, b is 12, 
and C is 11. So I'm going to have go ahead and rewrite it if you have trouble with the quadratic formula. B squared minus the square root. Oh, sorry. that I just wrote it wrong. Negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. So just plug and chug. I'm going to have a negative 12 plus or minus the square root of 12 squared minus 4 times 4 times 11 all over 2 times 4 ends up with negative 12 plus or minus 144 minus 176 over 8. Let me move over a little. So that gives me a negative 32 under the square root over 8. This is one, yeah, I want a simplified answer. Don't try to um, plug this into your calculator. First of all, since it's negative under the square root, you'll get an error. And um, I want a simplified radical as your answer here. So look at, we are going to have a, an I underneath because it's a negative, but 32, if you do your factor tree, you end up with five twos. So that means you've got two pairs of twos. So it'll be two times two on the outside or four. And then you'll have the I because it's negative. And then that remaining two will stay underneath. And then an eight. Now we're almost done except all of those leading terms the negative 12, the 4, and the 8 are all divisible by 4. So we can factor out a 4 or divide out by 4, which will give us negative 3 plus or minus 1i square root of 2 over 2. So our four answers, or our three answers here, we've got the 3, and then we have the negative 3 plus square root of 2 over 2 and negative 3 minus square root of 3 uh, square root of 2 i square root of 2 over 2 sorry okay this next one it's a little different it wants you to find a fourth degree polynomial with a leading coefficient of 3 and zeros at negative 1 1 and 3i so if you're writing the polynomial we have a leading coefficient of 3 if I have a 0 at negative 1, that's going to be a factor of x plus 1. So if I have x equals negative 1, when you turn that into the factor, it changes the sign. At 1 would be x minus 1. And then at 3i, I'd have x minus 3i. But remember from before, these come in pairs. So if... 3i is a 0, then negative 3i is also a 0. So that would be x plus 3i. Now when you combine these, you're going to want to multiply the two or FOIL the two conjugates together. So that will give you x squared plus 3ix minus 3ix minus 9i squared. And this is where the magic happens. Your conjugates will always cancel each other out. And we know from earlier that i squared equals negative 1. So this ends up being x squared plus 9 when you multiply it by a negative 1. And then you can go ahead and foil the other two parts together. And notice their conjugates also. So the middle terms here will also cancel out. And you end up with x squared minus 1. And then don't forget about the 3 leading coefficient of 3. 
and then you can go ahead and foil these two together or if you want to you can use the box method I've got two two by twos that's how many terms they have so I've got an x squared minus one and an x squared plus nine whatever meets in the box you multiply together so x squared times x squared is x to the fourth x squared times nine is nine x squared negative x squared and negative 9. And then when you combine those together, you end up with x to the fourth plus 8x squared minus 9. And then go ahead and distribute the 3. So you have 3x to the fourth plus 24x squared minus 27. So that is a polynomial that is the fourth degree with all of those coefficient of three and all the rest zeros.